to the Paper Crafters Library and Sunny Stampin' Studios. In this video, I'm going to spotlight a pretty vintage Valentine collection by My Mind's Eye called Love Me. I'm going to share a video tutorial on how to make this cute Valentine's pouch which features products from the Love Me collection. And finally, I'm going to tell you how you can enter to win the Love Me collection kit. First off, let's take a closer look at what comes with the Love Me collection kit. So as you can see here, the Love Me Collection Kit comes with nine sheets of double-sided cardstock paper. And I want to give you a close-up look of some of these patterns because they have a really nice selection. First off, at first glance, you see a lot of pink and red, kind of a deep burgundy mixed into this collection. But if you look at these three patterns in particular, you can see that there is a nice pop of blue as well. So here's this banner pattern. There you can see what the other side looks like with the hearts. We have this you know, plaid pattern. I really love the blue in this one especially. And then here you can see it has this really nice subtle doily pattern. We've got the banners on the one side and then just this nice polka dot pattern. Here we have some more blue. Here you can see this is hearts inside a circle. And then on the other hand, you have this um, hexagon shaped pattern. We have another hexagon type pattern, but they're smaller this time. And there is multiple colors. And then on the other side, you have this really cute XOXO pattern. We've got some more doilies here in different colors. And then there's this um, notebook style paper, but it has a really nice pattern at the bottom. More doilies. Now this pattern paper is kind of neat because it has, it's a style almost like a bingo card. And then on the other side you have this XOXO pattern. And this, this is the one that we're using for our pouch today. And then here you have this um, pattern that looks almost like vintage ads on it. And then some more text on the other side. So what I really like, when you take a close look at these patterns, you can see they've incorporated some really neat elements. So you've got the blue, as I mentioned earlier, and they also incorporate a lot of elements which are considered really trendy right now. For example, the doilies. I showed you those. We've got three different patterns of doilies in here that you can see. There's also um, banners incorporated. Banners are something that have been trendy for quite a while. And they've got two different styles of the banners here. You've got these vintage ads, and everything vintage is still popular right now. And anything that, that gives the style of, you know, the old style, old fashioned ads is really hot. And then, of course, bingo cards. Those have been around for a little while, but they're just as trendy as they were then. And then, of course, there was that pattern that had the um, notebook paper, which was this one here. And anything office products is still really hot right now. So lots of different patterns to work on, to work with in this collection. So now the other thing that comes in this collection kit is this accessory sheet. And this contains a variety of coordinating cardstock elements. There's no stickiness to it. You simply pop the cardstock elements out of the um, perforated sheet. They're held on by perforations. And then you stick it on using a double-sided adhesive onto your project. And what I really love about this is that there's a whole bunch of different styles of elements. We've got some borders. We've got some labels. We've got some doily styles, some hearts, some banners. Just tons of things to work with. And if you pop over to our blog at the end of this video, you'll see a few projects we featured using elements from this collection. So now that we've taken a look at what comes with the My Mind's Eye Love Me collection, I want to show you how to make a cute little pouch that holds some sweets. So here's a little treat pouch that I'm going to show you how to make. And you can see here from the side I've got some little gummy bears inside. You just grasp the bottom of the heart and you can see here it's held closed with this velcro closure. So you just pull the top flap up and open up the bottom flap and then I've got my treats inside a cello pouch which is just stuck to the inside of my little cardstock pouch. So then you just fold it closed like so. So very cute. So to make that you start with a 3 and 1 8 by 10 inch piece of pattern paper and this is that XOXO pattern that I showed you earlier. 
Now one of the things that's nice when you're working with a pattern like this is that there's no real direction. It doesn't matter. There's no upside down, right side up because you'll notice this pouch being made of one continuous piece of cardstock. If there was a directional pattern, at least one portion of it would end up upside down. And in this case, it just looks like it's all one continuous pattern. So you're going to take your pattern paper and you want some kind of a scoring tool. Here I'm using my um, personal paper cutter with a scoring blade and I'm scoring it at four inches and at eight inches. I'm then going to take my bone folder and I'm going to fold along all my score lines. And of course, when you do this, you do want to make sure that the sides are aligned. Now here, when you're looking at this, you can see because this side and this side are exactly the same size, when you close it and fold this flap over, it gives a little bit of a buckle. And that's perfectly fine because that's where we're going to be placing our treats inside the pouch. So now before we do anything else with this, we're just going to create our little border piece. So for my decorative border, I started with a one and one quarter by three and one eighths of an inch piece of cherry cobbler cardstock from Stampin' Up. And I punched it out using this punch from the Martha Stewart collection. So I'm going to now take it and I'm going to take my double sided adhesive and place a strip of double sided adhesive. I'm going to go to a couple strips of double sided adhesive across the straight portion of this. I'm then going to take my treat pouch and I want the shorter flap, the one that's only two inches, and I'm going to open that up and then using the lines in my grid paper I'm going to stick this to on top of the cardstock piece making sure that it is even. And then of course if you have any bits of your cardstock overhanging you do want to take some scissors and trim that. So here you can see what this now looks like. Now, if you look here at the edge of the pattern paper, you can see it looks a little bit unfinished. Somehow when you just have the pattern paper butting on to your um, punched border, it looks raw. So I wanted to cover that with some ribbon. Now the only ribbon that I had that was a nice narrow ribbon is this 1 8 of an inch taffeta ribbon from Stampin' Up. But as you can see here, the color is completely off. So I'm going to show you how I modified the color to match my project. So first off, I just want to cut a piece that's long enough that it's going to wrap around my um, top flap. And I want it to wrap around completely. So let's just see here. I want it to wrap like that. So I'm just taking my ribbon scissors and I'm going to cut it and then set that ribbon aside. So I'm going to go ahead and set the pouch aside and we're going to work on altering the color of our ribbon. So the goal of altering the color of my ribbon is to make it match as closely as possible to the colors on my pouch. So to do that I'm going to use a sponge dauber and I'm going to use some Cherry Cobbler Classic Ink from Stampin' Up. So I'm just going to pounce my dauber on top of the ink pad and then I'm going to hold one end of my ribbon and I'm going to drag this along my ribbon. So you want to keep going back to the ink pad, picking up some ink, and then just dragging it along the, col uh, along the length of the ribbon. Now of course one thing that you will notice is that this ribbon had white edges um, along both sides. You can see here when I flip it, you can still see some of the white edge there. So when you alter the color of the ribbon, you of course are covering up that whiteness, which in this case is a good thing because the pattern paper is actually not white. It's on a cream background. So as you can see here, I've covered the entire length of my ribbon with the cherry cobbler. But if you look at it against the pouch, it's still not quite dark enough. It still looks a little bit too bright. So I chose a second color of ink, and this is the Tim Holtz Fired Brick Distress Ink. And I'm using the same sponge dauber. And as I run this over, you can see it kind of darkens it, darkens the color up. So I'm basically going to apply it the same way I did the Cherry Cobbler Classic Ink. Now, you're probably wondering how I settled on 
uh, this particular combination of inks and really it was just trial and error. I started with a color of ink that was close to my cardstock color that was identical to my cardstock color so I used cherry cobbler cardstock for my border and that's why I started with the cherry cobbler classic ink but when I applied my first layer I noticed that it just didn't look dark enough so that's when I started looking at what other colors I had and just tested it out on small bits of ribbon um, layering the different colors until I achieved a color as close to my pattern paper as I could possibly get. And so that's what you see here. So we're now ready to apply this to our pouch. So now just before I apply my ribbon along the um, seam of the pattern paper, I'm going to take my sponge dauber with just the leftover um, ink that's saturated on there and I'm going to run it along the edge of my stamp border. Like you can see I'm kind of rubbing it um, against that. And that's just to give it a little bit more depth and dimension. You can see it darkens the edge a little bit. So you get this really pretty effect. So now the adhesive I'm going to be using for applying my ribbon is going to be my 1 8 of an inch score tape, which you see here. And the reason I'm doing that is because I need something that's narrow enough. I want the ribbon to be held on all the way around, but it's going to be hidden underneath the ribbon. And this is the only adhesive that I own that's narrow enough. So this is 1 8 of an inch. And I'm going to start by running it along the edge of my pattern paper. Now the nice thing about score tape is that you can tear it with your hands. You don't need your scissors. So I'm just going to apply it on the front. I'm not going to apply it on the back yet because it's hard to determine what the exact position is. So I've applied it to one side. I'm then going to take the edge of a pair of scissors and I'm going to peel that off. I'm just going to open this up so it sits flat on my grid paper. I'm going to align the edge with my grid paper. And then when applying my ribbon, I just want to make sure that I apply the sponged side facing upwards and I'm just going to hold it stretched across the adhesive and then carefully press it down against the adhesive like so. And then I'm going to take this and flip it over and as you can see here I can now use the edges of the ribbon as a guide for where to apply my adhesive. So I'm going to start so that this end is centered along that ribbon and I'm going to finish so that this end is centered here and then just give it a little rip. So now I'm going to take this end of my ribbon and stretch it across my adhesive like so and then I'm going to do the same with this end and to do that end I'm just going to take my adhesive again and I'm going to put one more layer on top like so. And then peel the backing off and finally fold this ribbon piece over. Now one thing I forgot to mention when I was inking the ribbon is that it is a good idea to give it some time to dry otherwise you will end up with ink all over your fingers. Now any overhanging bits of ribbon you can just take your scissors and trim it. So you can see we now have this really pretty border not only on the outside but also on the inside as well. So our next step is to add our candy. Now I have already gone ahead and placed my candy inside a cellophane, bag, a cellophane bag. And what I did was, as I was filling it with my gummy bears, and I just bought these from a bulk food store, I made sure that as I was filling it in there, every once in a while I'd stop to see how high this would be when folded over. I wanted something that was a little bit shorter than the four inches um, that I created my panels for. Now the way I arrived actually at the width of this piece, which is 3 and 1 eighths, is I measured the width of my bag and I made sure my cardstock piece was a little bit wider than my cellophane bag. So if you can't get cellophane bags exactly this size, these are those small ones that are sold by Stampin' Up, then simply adapt your pattern paper piece to the measurements of your cello bag. Fill it with your candy. Try to keep it relatively flat. This is about as flat as a gummy allows me to go. Measure how wide it is make sure your pattern paper is about an inth, eighth of an inch wider and then make sure that your panel is a little bit higher than the height of your cello pouch and then adjust your measurements accordingly if you need to. So I'm now going to take 
some double-sided adhesive and this is simply my scotch double-sided tape and I'm sticking it onto that panel and then I'm going to center and stick my treat pouch onto that panel as well. So as you can see I've stuck it to the tape so now it doesn't come off. So there you can see what that looks like. So now what we need to do is we need to create our hearts that we're going to be using to decorate the closure. So here I've die cut two hearts, a larger one and a smaller one, and I used my Presto Punch hearts template, which can be used not just with the Presto Punch, but also with the Spellbinders Grand Caliber. And I'm going to be layering the red on top of the cream. Now before I do that, I do want to stamp a greeting on the red, and what I'd like to stamp is the greeting Be Mine. So I'm using this Be Mine stamp, and it comes from a paper tray stamp set. The name is uh, Simple Valentine, but I want, instead of it to be together like this in one, uh, one straight line, I want it one above the other. So I'm going to start by stamping the word mine. So I'm only going to take my ink pad and I'm using my Sukineko, um Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And I'm stamp I've inked up only the mine and I'm going to start by stamping that image first. So I'm just making sure that my heart is straight and then I'm going to stamp the word mine towards the bottom of the heart. Like so. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my baby wipe and I'm just going to make sure that I clean any residual ink off and then I'm going to dry it by off to the side I'm just stamping it up and down on my grid paper and then I'm going to take my ink pad and I'm now going to ink up just the B and then I'm going to stamp that on top of the mine like so. So we've now got our greeting on there. So my next step is to take that greeting, actually I'm going to, I think first off, put my, i set that aside for a moment, I'm going to take my heart and I'm going to use my double sided adhesive and I'm going to make sure that I essentially cover the entire top half of my heart. I'm then going to close my pouch and hold it closed and I'm going to center and stick my heart over the border. like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this um, Tombow hook and loop tabs closure. It's a velcro style closure which I absolutely love because you can see here it's very low profile. Much more low profile than the velcro you would buy in um, the regular fabric store. So here I've just cut it apart on the sheet. I'm going to pull the two pieces off together and then I'm going to stick it so that it's going across the, or from the tip of the heart just above the bottom and then I'm positioning it vertically rather than horizontally and the reason I'm doing that is to keep the end of the heart from popping up. If you didn't have velcro down here then this part of the heart, your pouch, it would kind of stick up like this and it just doesn't look quite as nice as when it's closer to the bottom or forming it, shaping it a little bit better. So then at this point you want to seal or fold your bottom flap upwards and then you just grasp the backing on your velcro closure and then you're going to close it. Now as you're doing this you do want to make sure your edges are aligned otherwise it's going to stick down crooked. And then you just press it down and then to open it you just grasp the heart and you're going to be opening and closing like that. So now my very last step is to take my Be Mine heart and if you want to actually, you can add a little bit of sponging around the edge. And I'm not even re-inking. Um, I'm not even re-inking my sponge dauber. It's still the residual ink that's on there. And I've just inked a little bit along the bottom and the top. And then I'm going to use dimensional foam. Doesn't matter what brand or manufacturer you use. These ones are the Stampin' Dimensionals from Stampin' Up. Still have tons of them left. And I'm going to center and stick this over my cream colored heart. 
and there you can see my project is now finished. Now we have a PDF handout for this on the Paper Crafters Library blog which you can download as well as a bunch of other products showcased on our blog using this collection. So the last thing for the video now. How do you enter to win the Love Me Collection Pack by My Mind's Eye? Super easy. All you have to do is visit the Paper Crafters Library blog and leave us a comment in the comment section of the post you see here. Now if you're watching this video from somewhere other than our blog, there's a video description section underneath the video or near the video and in that video description section I've pasted the link that'll take you directly to the post that you see here. So then you scroll to the bottom of the post and you can leave your comment there. Now winners will be announced on the blog Friday, January 20th. See you there!